Hey guys, 65 Ford here. Um, this video is about the EU2000 and EU1000i Honda generators. This is the uh, extended um, fuel tank capacity, and I'm going to show you a way to do it for cheap. For I mean, I'm talking, you can have an extended range for under 20 bucks or so for both of your Honda generators. Let me show you. The issue with the Honda generators if you're running them for an extended period of time, especially at full load, they only have, like the 2000 only has a four hour capacity and then you have to refill the one gallon tank. Now the nice thing about the extended range is you can actually hook some a fuel hose to your cap and put this in another gas tank or something to the effect. Now the Honda EU 2000s and the EU 1000s both have a fuel pump inside and that's because you know most most engines are gravity fed and lawnmowers and stuff like that. The gas tank is higher than the carb, so um, gas is just fed down. But to get more of a capacity, they actually have majority of the gas tanks is higher than the carb, but some of it sits lower. So they actually had to put in a fuel pump to pump that last little bit of gas into the carb. That's our benefit, though, because that allows us to suck more fuel in there. Honda's also went through and made these things airtight, and you know they got a little off and on switch. Now you can buy the the caps off eBay, the um, billet aluminum ones for, I mean, they're like 20, 30 bucks each. If you have two, it kind of adds up, but I'm gonna show you how to do it for next to nothing. Here you see a cap that's actually already been modified. And what this has on top of it, is this is actually a, a Petcock, a, a gas drain um, off of Briggs and Stratton, okay? And what I do is I actually modify this into the cap but I also make so at any point you can take your original cap and turn it right back in to an original cap. If you don't want the extended range anymore, if you just want to temporarily do this, you can put it right back. Let me show you how. I'm going to pull out a little retaining pin, metal washer, spring, there's a disc, foam piece, and your main rod. And there's also another O-ring right there. And the way that this actually um, seals is not in there, but it actually is just the, the top of this right here pushing on top of this little O-ring, and that's what holds pressure in the gas tank with this spring pulling down on it. And by rotating it, there's a, it's actually sloped up a little bit. So by, by rotating this, it actually lifts it up just a little bit and that allows air to vent out, close, no air can vent out. Okay, we're done with this. Any point we can put this back in. So we'll just put this back together and set this aside. Now the only modifications you have to do to this is this is threaded, is you have to drill this out almost all the way. You notice at the very bottom, and I know you're not gonna really be able to see it on camera, but there is actually a lip down at the very, very, very bottom. And we're just gonna drill it down to there. And that's just to be able to accept just a barely larger, I mean, this is just slightly larger, just to be able to allow these threads to grip. So, I'm gonna take a drill bit. It'll be a 2364. I don't know if you can, it's all spun off on there. But it's 2364. So I'm just gonna drill this in. I'm gonna watch on this side until I get to the right depth right there and I still have my lip and I just barely removed any material at all okay now now because this is threaded and this is a fine thread this is actually like a, a pipe thread it actually tapers it gets a little bit um, smaller at the bottom thicker at the top it's meant to seal um, we need to chase the threads a little bit and I just have a 3 8 fine thread bolt here and this isn't and this is gonna and this is just gonna chase my threads so I'm just going to thread this in and it's just kind of going to, it's going to leave me threads in the plastic, kind of like a tap. I'm just going to take it down to there. Now I have threads in there and I can put this you know, that's the modifications to this. And I can put this right back in, and this will seal up, and this will work just fine, just like before. Now, the original ones from Briggs & Stratton, this is an original one, um, have a little O-ring here. Um, these are aftermarket ones that I just barely bought. 
They're identical except for the aftermarket ones didn't come with an O-ring, so I had to supply the O-ring. And the O-ring sits against that little ridge down in there. Just that little there's just that little teeny step. Right there. So that's what the O-ring does. And you can see it coming up there. Right to the bottom. So now it's sealed against there. This thing, whole thing is airtight. And one of the nice things about it is it actually functions the exact same way as the original cap. There's an off which blocks all airflow. So you could just put this right on just like this. You don't even have to have a fuel line attached to this and this does the exact same thing. Off, on. But now what you're able to do is take any fuel line hook one end to here and put the other end, you know, it doesn't even have to be sealed to anything, you can just stick the other end in a gas can and it'll suck it out. The, the fuel pump, it'll suck, I mean it'll probably lift maybe a foot or two max, but it'll, it'll lift fuel right up into there and in my situation I'm actually paralleling to, so I will use a a T. This is actually it's a a brass T, but it's meant for the PEX fittings. It's at the Home Depot. They're like two, three bucks, and I will split it. So both of these will be combined together, and then a third one will actually go and drop into a gas can and fill up. So here's the setup. Let's see if I can get you in here. So you can shut it off in transport or whatever. But you can turn it on and it runs down across 2T and one side of the T comes to this cap and the other one goes outside and it just bloop, drops into a gas can. That's it. As long as it's sitting in the bottom of the gas can It'll pull it up, and I'll show you my setup while we're here. Maybe I can shadow the whole thing, and then you guys can see. Okay. What I have is I have two EU 2000s, and we have a an extended exhaust that runs through here, and this is just a shield that sits off of it about a quarter of an inch. Um, these bolts just hold it off. But anyway, you can actually touch this while it's running. It never gets that hot because it's only sitting about um, two inches away from the other one. But that's just to flex right to outside. The other one has an extended exhaust too, just to make sure that everything vents outside. But it runs off of an automotive 12 volt fan. That it's, it's very powerful, but it forces the air across this is a deflector down through and these also have really good fans in them that pushes it as well but that's my generator setup. The, um, the fan just the fan just runs off of a, a plug off the plug. If you need to make a plug for your generator a 12 volt plug all you do is take a regular outlet plug and you just heat up this terminal, one terminal, just heat it up with a torch and while it's hot you just take a needle nose pliers and you just twist it and it'll remelt the plastic and it'll sit and that's a Honda one and you can do the same thing with the Yamaha which is just barely two angled ones but um, sometimes if you have a plug with one of those wider sides you might have to grind it just a little bit, I had to grind that one just a little bit but that's how I made my 12 volt plug, it works great so as soon as it starts the fan kicks on Wagons are rocking, don't come a knocking. Hey guys, thanks for watching. If you haven't already, subscribe. Um, leave me a comment below, rate. See you soon, guys.